Praise the Lord. I'm Pastor Kevin Williams Jr. And I'm First Lady Mara Burrell Williams. We greet you in the name of Jesus Christ and we invite you to watch our sermons and Bible studies that it may be uplifting to you. And please visit our website, gbwtalvn.org. And remember, we, we love, love you in Jesus', Jesus name. name. Oh, no. 
knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. My Heavenly Father, we come to you today, we give you name, thanks, and praise. We thank you, God, for being in the house one more time. We thank you, God, for waking us up this morning, starting us on our way, keeping us in our right mind, providing shelter for us, providing food for us, and letting us come to your house to praise and worship in freedom with no restriction of any kind. We're praying that this church will be packed every seat, every row, with those that's enthusiastic to receive the word of God, be baptized in water in Jesus' name and filled with the Holy Ghost. We pray that this word help, instruct, and deliver somebody right now. And let my flesh be submissive that you may use me as a ready vessel to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. We pray and ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Today's sermon topic or title, Who is your counsel? Hmm. All right. Who is your counsel? Yeah. <laughs> Being that I'm almost at the age of 40 and Seeing that December 3rd is coming really quickly, not November 3rd, but December 3rd, as me and my wife celebrate four years of our wedding anniversary. And looks thinks I'm getting older. My bones is telling me so. My back. <laughs> Never would I think that I would see a year like 2020. When we go for our physicals, most times of those, us that uh, play sports, high school, college, us that have jobs, nine times out of 10, they ask us to get a physical. And the physical will, in fact, detail your weight, your height, and some of us will even say, when they tell us our weight, we say, no, that's wrong, Doc. You don't know, you don't know what you're talking about. Right. I don't weigh that much. But when we get to the optical part of the physical exam, they have a stand maybe about 20 feet or so from these letters that's on the wall. And they say, put one in over your eye, and you're able to read all five, six lines. They say you have what? 2020 what? Vision. Looking at the year of 2020 is one of the most bizarre, crazy, unethical years of our lives. And we have experienced some things that we never thought that we would. But here in the book of Psalm, David is reminding us to not receive counsel from those that's not godly. Amen. We have now they, the Associated Press and many media networks and news have projected Joe Biden to be president-elect along with the first vice president woman in history and of color. But there has seemingly been some fishy business, to say the least, going on. We have to maintain our doctrine. The world is going to play games. We cannot 
tie our emotions to the ways of the world. And that's why when somebody says is listening to secular music a sin? No, it's not a sin, but it's definitely a weight. If you're not married, like this lovely couple here, Sister Arbiana and Brother Andrew, you should not be listening to aggressive R&B because that weight of that type of talk will put you in a place to what? To see it. So we have to be careful in every attribute of what we let in our life. Yeah. And if we can get to a place, church, to really understand that yes, we're in the world, but we're not of the world. Mm -hmm. And what does that truly mean? That means we don't function in those individuals that's in the world. They're going to lie in the world, they're going to steal in the world, they're going to kill in the world. The world is a sinful place. Mm -hmm. So if we ever was going to receive counseling, it should be some from somebody that has godly like attributes. We have essentially made the church during the pandemic be non-essential to our life. We have placed the church in not so much the physical building as those in legislative positions have made it virtually impossible for us to gather physically across the land during this time. But I'm saying from a spiritual standpoint, when you make Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter more important to your spiritual life than Jesus Christ, we have our priorities way out of line. We have to understand that yes, we must obey the laws of the land. In fact, the Bible even tells us to do so. But just because they are passing the legalization of marijuana, the legalization of same-sex marriage, does not mean that I need to get myself high and go run off and marry a man. Do I have a witness in the household today? Yes, sir. Who are you receiving your counsel from? If you watch some of these secular episodes that's on TV and they're constantly, repeatedly, over and over and over, pushing the narrative, it will begin to be encrypted in your personality. Yeah. And then without even knowing, you will begin to display some of the characteristics yeah. of the television shows that you're watching in your life. Right. You begin to make decisions based upon the episodes of these shows Instead of basing your characteristics and what we do, that the Bible tells us right. what to do. You see, I am a man that believes the Bible is the best instructions man. that one can have in his lifetime. In fact, somebody told me the Bible, if you break it down better, book of instructions before leaving earth. And I looked at all the characters, all the ministers, the prophets, the priests, the disciples, the apostles, every one of them. The 
not have the full body at their disposal. Because many of them were too busy writing the Bible to help us. And if you read the scriptures, you will see that times like this will prophesy. We are living in the last and evil days. And the sad part about that, many of us don't even know it. As the young folks say, most of us is not walking around woke. Whatever the status quo is, we abide by. Whatever we're told to do, we do. We don't think for ourselves. I make tough decisions in my life. But those decisions is to reflect my responsibility first as a child of God, second as a husband to one wife, third as a father, and fourth to everybody here and every member that's not here as a pastor. When I make my decisions, I reflect as such. And sometimes you will not even know the decisions I make. I remember five years ago, almost six years ago, I went to see this preacher that's in trouble for pedophilia with two leaders in our church. In fact, one of them is on the board. And afterwards, we went to Old Country Buffet. And Sister Arbion, I believe this is a restaurant that Andrew would appreciate. <laughs> but, the sad fact, I can't find no more Old Country Buffets. But we went there after a four-hour sermon. <laughs> we, I, I drawn out all the plans to almost to the day. Because it went to all the paying off the church. It was the final thing that I had shared with them. Every one of them, they kind of rolled their eyes, laughed, and got up and got some more food. But I made sure I share with them what God shared with me. Because even now, I keep reiterating to my wife, we're going to pay this church off. We're going to pay this like, ah, where? With what? Because it's power, life and death of the tongue. When you put it out and you mean it, and you have faith in what happened. The part that we ain't supposed to worry about is how it will happen. Now in my, in my communication, I always try to bring logistics or logic possibilities of how it possibly could happen. But when you're a servant of God, man or woman, it's not our job to figure out how God is going to deliver. Do I have a witness in the house on today? Amen. David even went to say in verse 3 that he's like a tree planted by the rivers of water. He's saying he's firmly he's firmly placed in a place where he can't be moved. He's placed, and I'm going to turn up in, the, in here in a little bit. 
I know you waiting on it. He's placed in a place that he will constantly receive war. Now, they said we could go days, even weeks, without food. But the essential part of the makeup of the body was made up of over 90% water. You can't go too long without water. And then I thought about the holy baptism where you have to be submerged fully into water. Are we going to fully follow the word of God? Or are we going to social media follow the devil? We have to be careful of the devices of the enemy and what he used. And we have to be thinking of him. Thinking of it to what we can do spiritually, physically, and financially to help enlarge, secure, and provide to the body of Christ. Our selfish, fleshly wants, thoughts is not bringing us to a place of success that we should be. We cannot worry about Minister Crump, I'm almost there. We cannot worry about the government of the world. Once you have done your constitution right, then all ancestors have fought and died for us to display your job is done. Get yourself back in the church and focus on the will of God. Let this mind which was in Christ Jesus be in you. When Jesus Christ was walking around the earth doing ministry in the four gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, you can see one time that Jesus spoke on the government elections. Do I have a witness in the house on today? I feel like preaching. Jesus Christ, in fact, said, I'm about my father's business. You don't have to worry too much. Who's going to be in office? Because when it comes down to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, his name is Jesus Christ. He is the one that rules in the heavens and the earth. And by his name, everything must bow. So in your body, and Kamala Harris is the president and the vice president to be your pastor. We'll say congratulations to that man and to that woman. But that man and that woman do not control what goes down in a Williams household. That man and that woman don't control what goes down in God's house. God will have a church. You know, no matter who wins, we must come together and praise his name. And what's his name? Jesus Christ. Because you're and the Harris did 
it opened up the book of Psalms, which is actually a book of songs. He opened up the importance of the counsel that we keep. The counsel that you keep is anything that's in your area. Anything that you hear, anything you see that you have control over, you have to be careful because that can determine your thought process. That can determine your emotions. That can determine your decisions. So that's why on today when the world has announced they present the world has announced they can bring the Bible way of temple bring the Bible way of temple the Bible let us make sure we know who our king is let us make sure we know who our prince of peace is make sure we know Who is the chief cornerstone? Who is the alpha and the baby? Who is the beginning and the end? Who is the man from Nazareth? Who is the man born of a virgin?
Come on, put your hands together. 